So this is the beginning of unit three, objects and the DOM. Let's talk a little bit about objects for today. So the learning targets we're going to go over is we're going to explain what an object is and why we use them in programming. We're going to create objects and we're going to access and update values and objects using their keys. These are the most important things for this lesson today. We are. We'll get there. Today you need to know a few terms. One of those terms is models. Not models like me. Models like a, a, a digital representation of something physical. Models, objects, keys, values, properties, access, some words you should be on the lookout for today. Because our goal for today, by the end of these lessons, we're going to build the famous internet game Agario. Has anyone ever played Agario or Agar.io, whatever you call it? You played it before? How does the game work? Yeah, you a big old circle. And what do you do? You eat the other little circles around you and you get bigger. That's exactly right. Cool? We're going to build this. Slither to IO is a little more difficult to build, so we're not going to do that in this unit. But if you want to learn, you can take the exact same concepts we, I'm going to teach you here and apply them to Slither to IO. But first, we're going to learn Agario first. Cool? You won't need them yet. Now, the fundamentals behind objects are a little tricky at first, but then when you get the hang of them, it'll make more sense, I promise you, okay? So let's go right into them. The first thing I want to talk about is what a model is. Now, a model in computer program, yes, question? Cool. Now, the first model I want to talk to you about is, is just what a model is. A model is a way that we represent something physical in its digital form. So if you think about this for a second, Amazon had all of these books available digitally. And you can go online and see what their books looked like on Amazon.com. But what they have to do first is see a book, see what all the information about the book is, get all of its data, and then turn it into a digital format. Now, the way you do that is first, you got to look at what a book is. In reality, if you want to turn a book into a Kindle, which is the digital version of a book, you have to know things like the title, the author, the genre, the length, chapters, all kinds of information about the book. And you have to store it all in one place. Let me give you an example. If you go to Amazon.com, for instance, and you type, go to books, you'll see books here. Let's Give me a book name, book title. Harry Potter. Cool. That's easy. If I look for Harry Potter, great. Now let's see all the information we can find out about Harry Potter from just looking at it here. First of all, wait, is that free? Oh, Prime is... The Kindle is free. Oh, cool. That's interesting. I didn't realize that. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. There's the title. Here's the author. A picture of the book. When it was published. Reviews about it. How much it costs. All of this stuff is taking a physical thing, a book, and modeling it in code. Now, all of this data about the book has to be recorded, stored, and then be digitally accessible to anyone. All of this information is taking a book and modeling it with code. Now, you can do the same things with all kinds of other stuff. Here's another example. A Snapchat user or an Instagram user. What info would an app like Snapchat or Instagram need to understand or to represent a person digitally? Username, cool. Real name, sure. Their phone number. Their email. Hobbies, maybe. Yup. What else? Life stories, sure. Their birthday. Their interests. Who they want to follow or who is following them for Instagram or their friends or whatever it is. For, for Snapchat. I don't know how Snapchat does those things anymore. They've been changing up their stuff so much recently. You need a bunch of information. Your Snap story, your DMs. You need to store a ton of information about a single person. Now, to do that, to create a model of this, we use what's known as an object. And an object in code is actually, when you first see it, it'll look a little confusing, but then when you use it, it'll make more sense. So, let's take a look. An object is just a model for something in the real world. It's how we hold a bunch of information about one thing in a single variable. An object is just a special variable that holds a bunch of information about one thing according to the label. Now, right here, 
this object has a, a bunch of labels. What are some of these labels for this book? Title. What's the name of this? What's the title here? Hunger Games. What's the next t t uh, label? Su it should be Suzanne Collins. That's my bad. That's a typo. I said Susanna Collins. It should be Suzanne Collins. Chapters. Published. How many pages? Is it a trilogy? Yeah. Yeah. So true. So I'm holding a bunch of information about a single thing in one variable. That's how we use an object. Now notice here, at the end of each object, they're separated. Each label is separated by a comma. Do you see that? You're going to mess this up a lot. Everyone messes up the first time they start building out objects. You need to make sure you have an opening and closing squiggly and that each of the labels in an object are separated by commas. Now, how do you access values in an object? Well, if you create an object like var obj equals an object with an opening and closing squiggly and there's one label, we call this label a key. And then whatever information it stores, we call that a value. So the key and the value. If I want to find out this value, I just say the name of the object, which is what? Obj, right here. Dot, and then the name of the label, which is what? Key. So if I say obj dot key, I get value. So if I wanted to find out how many chapters this book had, what would I write? Book dot chapters. Perfect. If I wanted to know the title of the book, what do I write? Book dot title. Because the name of the object dot the label, title. So if I want to know whether or not there are three books in this series, what would I write? Book dot trilogy. And it'll return true or false. True if there's three of them, false if there's not. So we're holding a bunch of information about one thing. Now that can be really, really useful. Let me give you an example. Right here I have a little code snippet where I created an object called obj, because it's just a fun word to say. And it has three labels. What are those three labels? Now if I want to get the value stored at any of these keys, you say the name of the object, which is what? Obj dot a, and that will give me true or false strings can be stored in objects. If I say obj dot b, that would give me true. If I say obj.c, it would give me 42. So that's how we access things in an object. Now, a question you might be asking is why? But why? Why would it be a good idea to store the string value of true or false, the Boolean value of true, and the number 42 in a single object? Well, what if we were making a trivia game? Has anyone ever played Quiz Up? Has anyone ever played Trivia Crack? These are games on your phone that ask you trivia questions. Here's how they work. They have an object for each question. In this case, trivia question 145 is my variable, it's my object, and it has three labels. What are those three labels? Question, answer, and points. So when I create my app, for each question, I would say trivia question, whatever number it is, dot question, and it would say true or false, strings to be stored in objects. Trivia question dot answer is true. Trivia question dot points is 42. And so doing this makes it much easier to get all the information about one thing and store it in one variable. So all of this info being in one variable makes our lives much, much easier. We don't have to create like 15 different variables. You just create one variable and it holds all the information you need. Here's an example. Here's a question. What color is a mirror? What color is a mirror? Anyone know? The answer is right there. The question object dot answer would say the color of whatever's reflected into it. So if you want to write out the code to select, hey, let's let's try. If you want to select the number of points, right? If you want to select the number of points, what would you say? Question object dot points. Perfect. This is how you use objects. Exactly. Now, what if you have to update a value in an object? Well, that's almost the same thing. If you have an object like var obj equals opening and closing squigglies, one label called key and one value, you would say obj dot key 
equals new value. And that will change the value here to whatever you say it is equal to. So obj.key is new value. If I say obj.key, it will no longer be value. It'll be new value. So let's try an example. Right here, if I want to change the number of points my trivia question is worth, right now it's worth 42 points, but that's a really weird number. Let's make it a rounded number. Let's make it 50. So all I have to do is say trivia question 145 dot points is equal to 50. And it'll change it to 50. So let's try another one. Let's try another example. Var question object. The, the question object dot question is if you enjoy wasting time, is that time really wasted? Your mind just exploded. Well, not object.key because we don't want it to be the key property. We want it to now have an answer property. So if I wanted to update this here and say this object should have an answer label, what would I say? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Question object dot answer is equal to whatever you think it is. Sure, no, maybe, I don't know. This question's weird. Whatever you want to put in there, that's totally fine. So this is how you use objects. Now, I want you guys to get a little practice doing this very quickly. Everybody open up their Slack channels right now. You're going to pair up with one other person, and you're going to create an object for any book and paste it into the Slack channel for period six. So pick a book, any book. It doesn't matter which book you want to pick. Say you're reading a book like Ender's Game. The Hungry Hungry Caterpillar, Clifford the Big Red Dog, whatever you're reading, I'm totally fine with that. Find your favorite book, and you guys are going to make an object to that book that looks like the one we created here. Take about five minutes. It's 2.33 right now. At 2.38, you should have an object holding all the information about your favorite book. Now, if you need to use this, power, this slide to get it done, I'm going to paste this into the Slack channel so you can all check it out. Cool?